Hello friends, I am here today with a highly requested video, and by that I mean maybe two or three people asked me about this, but that's as good as it gets around here, so we'll take it. Today I'm going to be talking about Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, which throughout the course of the video I will be referring to as BPAL because Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab is a mouthful to say over and over again. Um, this is an indie perfume brand that I discovered over a decade ago, and I have been utterly obsessed with ever since. So if you're not familiar with them right now, my hope is that by the end of the video, you will feel the stirrings of an obsession beginning in your heart. First, I do have a few things to mention. One, it always feels a little bit strange to me to basically say, behold my stuff. Here are all of my things. Here, is the, here are the things that I own. It feels a little boastful and braggy, and uh, sometimes I feel uncomfortable about that. But at the same time, I know I like to hear people talk about their collections of precious things, and I like to get peeks into the the things that people have gathered around them that mean something to them or that they're excited about. And so there's, I'm sure there's a reason that people request this sort of content, for lack of a better word, even though I hate that word, uh, but whether it's a blog post or a video or a podcast or whatever, there's a reason that people are into this. They like to see and hear about the things that you're into, I assume, because that, that's how I feel. So I will try not to feel uncomfortable about that. And secondly, I worry that getting on camera and talking about something might make people think that you're some sort of an expert in that thing. Or even worse than that, I feel is they think that I think that I'm some kind of expert. And I can assure you, I am no kind of expert. I am like 90% idiot, okay? So this is just me sharing a passion of mine, sharing a collection, because I like to smell good. I love to smell good. Perfume is a, a passion and obsession that I have experienced since I was a little girl. And it has only gotten more intense as I have gotten older. So that's all this is. It's, it's me sharing something I love with you and hoping that it resonates. And along those lines, uh, I wrote something about this on my blog last month that was inspired by an artist, Tyler Thrasher, who posted this on his Instagram. And this isn't verbatim, I don't remember exactly what it was, but basically you don't have to be an expert in the thing you love in order to, to love that thing. You don't have to know everything there is to know about things that thing. I, there's so many things to be interested in. There's so many things to learn. How can you ever know it all? But that shouldn't stop you from being excited about it and sharing it. So I wrote a little bit about that on my blog last month, and I will link it below um, in the comments if that's something you're interested in reading. That being said, I will Apologize in advance also, it is springtime in Florida. It is very breezy out there. So the wind chimes are going bonkers and there is someone aggressively mowing their lawn. So there's a lot of noise. My, the quietude of my sanctum has been assaulted by a spring cacophony, uh, but we'll, we'll get past that. Anyway, let's, let's get into the video. Okay, so now back to Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. I discovered BPAL back in November of 2004, and I guess it's a little weird to remember it down to the month, but I was having a terrible go of things at the time. So the one bright spot in the midst of that quagmire of misery is certainly going to be memorable for me. 
I had just found the website Makeup Alley and I had fallen down the rabbit hole of fragrance reviews. It was at this time that I stumbled upon a review for a scent called Snake Oil, sold by a mysterious, thrillingly dangerous sounding company, Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Penned by a user calling themselves Shrieking Violet, they described it as exotic and unfamiliar, evoking images of bazaars and far-off locales. So fascinated was I by this description. I read further their reviews for the intriguingly named Chimera, Haunted, and Hellcat, growing more and more exhilarated with every fragrant word I devoured. I raced over to the website, my excitement reaching fever pitches as I read more about the company. Inspired by a vast range of influences, they specialized in eliciting emotional responses through perfume and creating unique, masterfully molded scent environments that capture legends and folklore, poetry, and the stuff of dreams and nightmares. I didn't know there were people making these kinds of scents. I grew up in a household filled with, among other things, Ouija boards, meditation circles, tarot cards, and astrologers. I was raised on books of mythology and folklore, fairy tales and fables. In my teen years, I became obsessed with ghost stories and horror movies. And at the time of my discovery, I was in my mid-twenties and the sole employee at an occult bookstore surrounded by rare tomes of magic, antique grimoires, and volume upon volume of every sort of esoteric arcane subject matter that you could possibly imagine. From what I was reading in these fragrance reviews, there was a person out there creating perfumes inspired by all of these things, the things I loved best in the world. To be honest, I was smitten before I'd even perused the entirety of the website or placed my first order. If you peruse the BPAL website, you will find collections devoted to myth and folk tales, beloved books and cinema, for example, The Dark Crystal and Only Lovers Left Alive, RPG tropes, poison gardens, female positive comics and graphic novels. If there is a weird or obscure interest favored by dark-minded romantic souls, no doubt you will find a fragrance dedicated to it here. Over the years in getting to know the folks at the lab, I am dazzled by not only their endless brilliance, but I'm also awed by their compassion and kindness and tireless and vigorous activism. So it has been a pleasure and a privilege getting to know Beth and to a lesser extent Ted and Brian and more recently the wonderful Tom and Galen. It's so great to know these wonderful people creating these magnificent perfumes. So before I jump into talking about a few of my favorites from my BPAL collection, I will note that they basically offer two different kinds of perfume blends, by which I mean there are the general catalog scents, uh, the fragrances that are stocked all year long, as well as the seasonal limited release Fragrances. I've been collecting both for many years now, and as you can tell, I've got quite a bit of an accumulation. It's going to be kind of tough to narrow it down, but I have chosen 10 favorites to talk about, so let's just get into it. Owl Moon is a collaboration between Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab and jeweler of surrealist psychic armor, Blood Milk. A scent steeped in mythology and magic, Owl Moon opens with the blackest, earthiest patchouli and calls to mind cool, moist soil at the base of a pine tree through which all of the busy little night creatures slither and crawl, the pale, ghostly light of the moon glinting off their scales and wings. A yellow-eyed owl perched overhead meditates briefly before silently embarking on his nightly hunt. The sour, screechy scent of his nest, littered with rodent bones and pellets, serves as a warning nearby. This is the fragrance of potent night magics, rich and ripe with darkness and feral mysticism. The sharpness of the patchouli streaked with high-pitched honey combine to form an aura that is both graceful and grotesque, sacred and profane. 
it dries down to a spellbinding narcotic musk. The limited edition Schwarzemond, which I believe translates from the German to mean Black Moon, and which makes sense as it was one of their monthly lunacy offerings from several years ago. This is the 2006 version, but they have restocked a few times over the years, with 2011 being the most recent. Brimming with notes that feel like a warped and wicked tripping of the tongue when you attempt to pronounce them, it's a heavy, velvety, and vaguely menacing fragrance, woven throughout with brooding resins and dark lurking patchouli. It smells a bit predatory and poisonous, but in the very best way. Thanatopsis is a meditation upon death inspired by William Cullen Bryant's poem and a deep, solemn earthen scent containing pine, juniper, and musk. A greenness so lush and concentrated that it is nearly a syrup, growing in mysterious realms alongside venerable woods and breathless darkness. Dana O'Shea is reminiscent of rice pudding with a soft pour of cream on top, or perhaps a honeyed milk custard topped with sugared marzipan. But imagine dreamy spoonfuls of all of this while a faint incense lingers in the air. It sounds delicious, but don't eat it, tempted though ye may be. Danube is a very special scent that I believe has been discontinued for quite some time now. It's a deep blue aquatic fragrance, but not salty, ozony, beachy aquatic, nor is it murky, swampy aquatic. It's like a cold swimming pool on a hot day, or maybe if you were adding grapefruit to your pool instead of chlorine with every blue flower imaginable floating on top of the water. Imagine being six years old and holding your breath and submerging yourself in this pool and then slowly sinking to the bottom. The water is chilled, you feel like the only person in the world and everything is totally silent. Imagine peering up and seeing the sun streaming down into the water between all of those blue petals. It's calm and soothing and serene, and it's absolutely a must for hot, sticky weather and people who don't have swimming pools. I adore the summer scent of sweet, musky, floral orange blossom. So bergamot, orange blossom, and vetiver was destined for greatness on my shelf long before I held the small amber bottle in my hands. The vetiver adds a bitter earthiness that binds the shimmering honeyed blossoms and tells a long forgotten story of how you sobbed your broken heart into an orange grove at midnight. You gather the dirt and tears and blossoms and clouds that floated across the moon and you hid them all in the pages of an old diary because you were young and everything was tragic. And then you burned the whole thing for incense as a middle-aged woman and thought, wow, that thing I did back then was a good choice, even though it felt scary and sad at the time. Cottonmouth from the Carnival Diabolique collection is a blend of the sugared incense of the lab's signature snake oil combined with somber, waxy spring lilies brightened by the soft, honeyed green of fresh linden blossoms. Altarpiece number one from the Ars Inspiratio collection, inspired by the work of Hilma of Klint as seen in the book, The Art of the Occult. A brightness as glimpsed through shadow, a keyhole's view of the sun small and still as a single candle's flame against the immense dark, as vast and total as Annihilation's afterglow. This is a scent that proves to me more than anything how much I have to learn about fragrance and perfume, how little I actually know. I can only speak of this in terms of fractured, fragmented imagery, the slivers and splinters of a dream. It's Beyond Everything is a phrase I just read in a totally unrelated book, 
And that's how I feel about this gorgeously evocative offering. A bright, dry citrus haloed by amber's translucent sweetness, bound by the spiced warmth of dragon's blood, and fixed in a state of permanent darkness by the heady, heavy imprint of where Oud once was. Circe and Davidiosa, inspired by the work of John William Waterhouse and also in the Ars Inspiratio collection, is a scent that for me is inseparable from the painting itself. The colors in this mythic scene are so lush and beautiful that they defy description, and they're somehow reflected in the scent itself. I have always thought that tipping dish of poison, the shade of crushed emeralds and mantis wings, must be the precise color of our heart's blood, when we are in the venomous throes of enraged, envious desire. Circe Individuosa captures the scent of exercising one's powers, one's divinity, in murky and dangerous and exhilarating ways. It's such a gorgeous fragrance, mossy and musky, with a subtle, bitter treacle and vaguely electric in the way that euphoria resulting from ill-advised behavior makes you feel. Sort of like... Fuck yeah! Oh shit! Whoops! At the risk of sounding desperately unhip, in night when to all colors into black are cast has got me feeling myself. I feel like I might be typecasting myself, especially since I thought I was slowly emerging from my all black everything phase. But the gothic melodrama of this fragrance is the meest thing I have ever smelled in my life. Imagine if there were such musks as sad dried flowers from my mom's funeral marking a page in a ghost story musk, or when I have to get up and pee at midnight and I divine phantom shapes from the shadows of the shower curtain musk, or Reading poetry by candlelight at 5 a.m. because I perversely read early in the morning and not late at night, musk. Or ordering a lucid dreaming blend from Etsy and drinking it, not realize that the seller and I got our wires crossed and she made potpourri, not tea, and I stupidly brewed up and drank potpourri, musk. All of the meanness of me all of my weirdness and sadness and strange inner darkness, but also so much joy for beauty and friends and the lovely things in the world. This too somehow found a way into this bottle and it smells just like me. Well, if you are still here listening to me wax poetic at ridiculous length about the Sense I Love from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Thank you. I appreciate your enabling me <laughs> in my pursuits. If you liked this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing for further stinky content and perfume reviews. And also, I am doing a giveaway for a mystery grab bag of 10 cents from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. So if you'd like to be entered, leave a comment below and let me know about your favorite scent notes or your favorite scent notes for spring or your favorite scents from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. Oh, well, let's just talk about stinky stuff in the comments, okay? You leave a comment and you will be entered in to the giveaway to win this surprise grab bag of 10 cents from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab and they are full-size bottles like this size right here, although not one of these. These are my favorites, so you can't have them. Um, and within a week's time, I will announce a winner probably here and on my blog or on Instagram somewhere. I mean, if you win, you're going to know. Okay. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and till later, weirdos.